We're not going anywhere. Now you and I are the only thing standing between that ugly bastard and a city of two million people. Now we have a choice here. We either sit and wait or take these flare guns and have some zombie takeout. Welcome to episode 425 of Zombie Takeout. Zombie yes, Takeout. it's 425. I missed. I messed up last week, and my notes were wrong. I said 425. Oh no! <laughs> um, before we get to this week's movie, just something I noticed over the break, over the week, what? I should say. Um, we have not had a break in a while. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> four more weeks. Four more episodes, and then we get a week off. It feels um, like we're at this grisly trudge now. <laughs> Four what more episodes, done? week off, four more episodes, that's it for the year. Um, mm-hmm. But um, during the weekend, um, our review of what we do in the shadows popped up in my YouTube recommendations. And just whenever one, our, one of our old episodes, particularly when we are on camera, pop up, I like to watch it just to, you know, for cringe. <laughs> <laughs> At the beginning of the, in the new segment, I was talking about how, you know, this was in twenty early twenty eighteen, so Disney was had this plan to release a Star Wars movie every year until like <laughs> long after everyone who's currently living is dead. <laughs> and then solo tanked. Yeah. I realized as horrendous as twenty twenty has been, at least there wasn't a fucking Star Wars movie. <laughs> well, you know, that brings that brings up a great time for me to make my prediction public because i actually okay. said this to mrs scotto a couple days ago and and i've been on the money with star wars movies and and the star wars franchise for the entire length of this podcast yeah, you've really. had a good track record yeah this is my latest there are going to be kids mm-hmm. that are going to be star wars those are some really good tv shows you know they should make a movie out of that. <laughs> I, That's I, gonna happen. Oh, it'll happen eventually. Times. Yeah. <laughs> um, honestly, in recent years, they've done much better on TV than in movies. Exactly. So they're going to be sticking with TV. Yeah. I mean, it's going to be the house that you know built Disney Plus pretty right. much. Um, and I got no complaint. I have no issue with that. I love the Clone Wars. I love Rebels. I love the Mandalorian. Right. Looking forward to that coming back. Um, but I realized. I am officially more of a Trek fan now because I'm more excited about the new season of Discovery <laughs> than I am the new season of Mandalorian. I'm excited for both. I know, you know, I'll get both of them in. I mean, I'll watch know. both of them, but, you know, I, I have CBS All Access, so I, I caught the beginning of Discovery. I will. I, I have decided Discovery is now my new favorite Trek show because I just love that they're changing the game every season. Right. And and I don't know what people are complaining about or if they want like the, you know, the good ship lollipop or whatever. <laughs> but that that first season is definitely one of the tightest first yeah. seasons of Star Trek, probably even better than the original series, because the original series had a lot of 60s, yeah. you know, hokiness. Right. And <laughs> I just love that it's it seems like almost deliberate fuck you. To the regressive, you know, whiny fans who aren't going to be happy until a, a time rift opens up both in the Star Trek universe and in reality. And we get a Star Trek series with like circa 1990 Patrick Stewart as Picard and like circa 68 William Shatner as <laughs> Kirk co-captaining the Enterprise with, you know, time stuck, a combina- the time stuck combination of both crews. <laughs> They just want some cosplay, that's all. That's what they want, you know? That's never going to happen. Um, and even if they did something that was exactly like the original series, they, they would still complain that it's not original, and, uh, yeah. you know, that there is just no pleasing some no. people. I mean, so. mark my words, I'm, I got a prediction, because um, I keep wanting to say Brave New Worlds because of the book, but Strange New Worlds is a throwback. Yeah, it is a deliberate throwback to old school Trek. Sorry, I bumped my yeah. desk. If you heard that, I'm like, um, yeah. but I guarantee there will be people bitching about it because it's not, you know, Picard or Kirk, what have you. Right. 
even though they're and, giving them classic Trek with Spock and Pike. And I mean, Anson Mount is a brilliant Pike. I, I'm super excited about that and hope that really happens. Honestly, it's going to happen. We just got to wait okay, a couple of years. Okay. All right. Uh, they're, I think they're going to launch in 22. Um, they've got all of the Star Trek shows mapped out for until I think 27 or 28. They just need some Jeffrey Combs. Oh yeah. Um, that's we, the only thing we're missing. And we currently have three on the air. Um, Picard is coming back for another season. Discovery season three just launched. Um, Lower Decks first season just ended. If you haven't seen Lower Decks, definitely give it a shot. Um, sure. It's a it's an animated Star Trek show, com- comedic Star Trek show. It's very much kind of the modern day primetime animated, you know, Family Guy influence kind of a thing. I was going to say, isn't this the Orville? <laughs> um, I, I haven't really watched much of the Orville. Um, you're planning to do like a week trial of um, X Access when d- the season of Discovery ends, right? Oh, I'll probably rent it for a month when okay. that, when Discovery ends. Okay. Yeah. Um, check out uh, Lower Decks when you do that. Um, yeah. I'd be curious to see, you know, since you're familiar with the Orville, what you think of it. Anyway. Yeah, Orville wasn't bad. You know, it was mm-hmm. uh, you know it was light. It was funny. Yeah, I mean, they had mm-hmm. sometimes where it was heavy handed, and sometimes where he was just like too interested in twentieth century show tunes. And <laughs> so it's okay. a Seth MacFarlane show. Oh, it is. It very much is. Yeah. Uh, although there there is one great space battle scene where they're uh, listening to Dolly Parton's Nine to Five. <laughs> I haven't seen the Orville, but I've seen a lot of Family Guy, and that sounds a lot like everything I know about Seth MacFarlane. <laughs> <laughs> All right. On to I this week's movie, on to this. <laughs> which is from 2013 Pacific Rim, concluding our 2020 trilogy, even though only a few scenes were set in 2020. <laughs> and it, the... it didn't even matter what year this no. was. <laughs> of course, that brings us to the impromptu plot summary, sponsored by Japan, who would like to say that you're welcome for the giant monsters and the giant robots and the weird names and many other things about this movie, including one of the actors. And also brought to you by announcing your move. Deploy sarcasm! Little kids love announcing your move. All right, um, so... Cringiest thing in anime. (laughs) (laughs) And I love anime. Fire plasma cannon. (laughs) Razor sword. Oh, this fucking sword. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, All right, so... um, we're just minding our own business. I think it's 2013 and then when it mm-hmm. began, right? Yes. And uh, all of a sudden, uh, out pops creatures from the Pacific Ocean. Um, you know, they... Um, Giant they cause, reptilian killer things. They uh, cause some chaos. They kill some people. They stomp on things. Uh, almost wish they had just like set it up, you know, like a, a trilogy. And this is like the second movie in it or something like that. Because the beginning does seem like it is the second movie in a series. Because there's so much beginning that sounds like, well, here's the last movie that you maybe not have seen. Right. Maybe they could have called it the Atlantic Ridge. I don't know. (laughs) Um, No, that's the Asylum version. Oh, right, right. That like the asylum needs to do a version of this. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I think they did. Uh, so we have creatures coming out of the sea. Uh, we have nothing that can really stop them, uh, but we do eventually come up with some weapons. The catch is they have to be on these uh, robots, these giant robots that can't be piloted by only one person. They have to be piloted by two people, and not remotely but the two people have to be in the robot which i mean well we'll get into more of that after mm-hmm. that uh, yeah. let's, more on that later push through uh, this uh, sp- 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 setup first Somewhere. so the robots fight the the monsters but the monsters keep getting more advanced they keep learning uh they come out in uh you know, sometimes they come out in multiple waves <laughs> at the same time. And, uh, well, who we think are going to be our, our Wonder Boy teams, uh, they, they, uh, the one brother gets killed, leaving the other brother uh, alone after they had... Oh, I almost forgot to mention, or did I not? They, they, the two pilots of these robots mm-hmm. have to be psychically connected. Yeah. 
Hmm. Um, and of course, the one brother dies while they're connected, so that leaves. That's gonna leave uh, Mark. Yeah, that's gonna that's gotta hurt. Um. So he goes off into. Well, I'm kind of thinking. Are, are they insinuating that construction's like this lowly thing yeah, that yeah. you know he has to go on? It's like, um, okay. And this movie, made in thirteen, was a bit ahead of its time because their plan after the Jaeger, the the the, the, giant, the first attempt at giant robots fails, is they're going to build a wall. Yeah, and it's. I mean, honestly, one of the dumbest plans. You know, I do like this one thing of this movie is people come up with dumb ideas Mm -hmm. and they are punished for those dumb ideas because they are called out as dumb ideas. This movie that I'm going to, to, you know, comment a lot as being very, very anime influenced came out a year after an anime called Attack on Titan in which there is a big city surrounded by a big wall to keep out these giant monsters, and one day one of the monsters is big enough to get over the wall. Right, so uh, this is the problem you could see coming from a mile away. Well, mm. if the creatures are advanced enough to beat up these robots that with, with very advanced <laughs> weaponry yeah. that they couldn't put on a plane or a ship, I think you're going to figure out how to get around a wall. If zombies can figure out how to stack up and get over a wall, Kaiju <laughs> can figure out how to get over a wall. So or naturally, that is... That is exactly what happens, of course. As soon as they go through a wall, they've got no defenses on mm-hmm. the other side of the wall, and it's a bloodbath. But fortunately, our our hero Marshall has, um, you know, ra- has rallied his uh, pilots or his remaining pilots outside of Hong Kong, kind of operating mm. quasi independently. Mm. But uh, you, you get mm. that he's being funded by the Chinese government right. mostly. By the way, Marshall is his rank. His yes. name, Stacker Pentecost. Yes, yes, he's the 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 marshal, the the, the head leader of the defense. Mm-hmm. And um, well, so they they get he gets a little desperate and seeks out the uh, pilot from the beginning, and uh, they don't say who he has picked as a co-pilot for him. Mm-hmm. But uh, he, our uh, hero Raleigh, he um, chooses the person that pretty much has been scoffing at him the whole time he had come in. And uh, I don't know, it was kind of odd because she's, you know, has such disapproval and doesn't have any actual combat experience, kind of making, being judgmental about decisions he's made in the past. It's, it's Pentecost's adopted daughter. Um yeah. Who basically criticizes um, Beck at every rally, every sec- every step of the way. One day he's like, "Oh, you think you can take me?" While they're all sparring, and yeah, she, I think she took him, didn't she? Or did he? Was it close? I think it was like a tie. Yeah, you know? basically. I, yeah. Yeah, I don't remember who really won in the end. I think they got interrupted before they could do the deciding. Right. right. And then he fall. said, "He said she's going to be my co-pilot." Yeah. That was impressive enough for him. And, uh, well, they, they get into his old uh, robot. It's, um, and God help us, it, it, it's somehow analog. How, how, what is, do they even know what that means? <laughs> well, it's not exactly analog. It's just not run on the same. Well, it couldn't be shut down by an EMP, so it had to be. How is it not shut down by an EMP? Later right. in the film. One they of the... actually said it's not digital; it's analog. It has a nuclear reactor. Because <laughs> later in the film, one of the um, kaiju sends out an impulse that knocks out all you know electronics because that's what the impulses do. Yeah. But yet, Gypsy Danger um, Rally's um, robot still worked. Like well, it, it so wasn't this... electronic. Right, I like none of that made any sense whatsoever. No, no. Uh, so they have this wily e. coyote plan. I'm going to skip ahead a bit to the till the end battle here, and, yeah. and and skip the subplot of the scientists. Well, yeah, there are um, these two scientists. Um, actually, one of them is kind of important. Um, one is played by the guy from While We Sunny. The other, guy, the, the other is played by the guy from Torchwood. Um, the guy from While We Sunny gets tries to drift with a kaiju brain. Um, 
doesn't Which, really... Which, of course, you can see from a mile away also yeah. that that is a stupid, stupid idea. Doesn't really do much in this movie. Completely sets up the sequel. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, I figured that much. Yeah, he goes on a quest to find uh, more of a brain to mm-hmm. uh, drift with. And uh, they they he does eventually find some intelligence that helps. Uh, yeah. Because the Wile E. Coyote plan is to drop a nuclear bomb or nuclear reactor of some sort into the uh, the tunnel that they're coming through, the interdimensional tunnel that they're coming into to get mm-hmm. into our Pacific Ocean. Yeah. And uh, that he, yeah, he discovers that they need to have a D, some DNA of the kaiju on them or else so, they won't get in. Well, no, that wasn't what the brain was for. They just grabbed one of the bodies and fell through. <laughs> Oh no no they they did they needed to have they needed to have a cart they needed to have kaiju DNA to get through yeah. because it was reading like a scanner right and so Rally at the in his suicide what was looked to be a suicide move at the end just grabbed the body and jumped through right the brain was just to figure out you know their plan basically. Right. Well, that's how they figured out that intelligence. Yeah. They wouldn't have known that they needed right, DNA right. Okay, to get right, right, through. Right. So that that was the the crucial piece yeah. to the plan. And well, uh, that was kind uh, of accidental, though. Um, always Sunny guy just was kind of obsessed with the kaiju. <laughs> so they, uh, of it's course, early day. They... I'm just going to keep calling him Always Sunny guy, though. <laughs> and uh, the other guy is kind of like this Uriah Heap. You know, guy from he must have played Uriah Heep in David Copperfield because that's always what I pictured Uriah Heep to look like. Oh, I've seen him in his Torchwood. I uh, played Owen. Uh, Bern Gorman is his name. Well, if you watch enough BBC shows, you'll see the same actors yeah. like cycle in and out. And now I mean, I've seen him on a few different. Oh, okay. Murder in, mystery in stuff. Torchwood. He was the guy who ended up undead, fell in love with the Asian woman. I've even seen Idris Elba in some of those old <laughs> British murder mysteries. Mm. <laughs> but anyway, um, so the, of course they do the slim pickings with the transformer riding the nuclear weapon <laughs> down to ground zero and uh, hilarity ensues. Mm-hmm. And at the beginning of the film, they define kaiju, which is nice, nice touch, because, you know, unless you're a, a, a fan of anime or old Japanese monster movies, you don't know. And they also defined Jaeger, which I was very happy about because I, I, <laughs> all the Jaeger jokes were not necessary. Jaeger is German for hunter. Right. That's, um, the, that's the point of it. It's got yeah. the deer on it. It's, you know. Jaegermeister actually means master of the hunt. Yeah. It's, you know, of course, because they, they're, they're guzzling it before yeah. going out. Although the deer's blood thing is a myth. Oh, no. Um, also. This is one case where I liked the expositional monologue in the beginning. Because you are effectively jumping into the middle of a story. Right. It's it's uh, really strange how this feels like it's almost in the middle of the trilogy. Yeah. And here we are into it. Mm. Um, and there's, like I said, there was a sequel. Um, there They hinted at one more movie. Um I have to say, going back to this one, though, Charlie Hunnam and Diego Klattenhoff, the brothers, cast extremely well. They're practically twins. Yeah, that was creepy. <laughs> yeah, and they're not related. It was kind of amazing. Um, the drifting angle's interesting. That the fact that they have to be neurologically linked. No, neurally linked. Uh, well, I mean... It just meant that they didn't need to talk nearly well, as much I mean, as they did. <laughs> they kind of, you know, ruined it. Well, how would you do that in a movie, though? I don't know. And maybe they didn't need to be psychically linked, you know? I think that was kind of a silly... It just kind of added some really stakes. really wasn't necessary. I did like the set inside of the Jaegers, too. That that was yeah. nicely done. Um, also, now, if we're being realistic... Mm-hmm. You're going to be realistic about this movie. I'm going to be. Like, well, because first off, I mean, they're acting like we didn't have, we couldn't have built a digital robot in 2013 that we would have just built an analog robot uh-huh. somehow. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, uh, they, they of course, would be remote controlled. You yeah. know? They, they wouldn't have, I mean, we had drone technology in 2013. 
So the fact that they would actually have people in the robots, it's silly, but I get why they had to do it in the same regard why Luke Skywalker's death in uh, Last Jedi was bad. (laughs) We've already debated Last Jedi. (laughs) Well, because he wasn't there and... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> it doesn't really have as much meaning if he's actually not in the field of battle. Uh-huh. And, and that's why they had to actually, they couldn't use the remote angle here. They had to be in it. So uh-huh. there were actual stakes involved. Okay. Yeah. Or else we'd be mourning a robot. Right, right. <laughs> um, the martial arts bow was nice. Um, when they first fire up Gypsy Danger. And it's GIP. It's named after the De Havilland Gypsy, an in, a airplane engine used in World War II. Um, the bow was nice. It was that you know hand over fist bow yeah. in, from martial arts. That was a nice touch. Um, the handshake. Yeah. They um, called it. And the glow inside the kaiju mouth. Very Godzilla. You know, you get when he gets that glow before he fires. Yeah. Um, and. You know, had it been the first time I'd seen this movie instead of the third, I would have been surprised that that opening mission failed. Hmm. I wouldn't have seen that coming, I don't think. You know, the brothers and one of them got killed. And... Well, right, yeah, that was a, that was surprising. It, it did seem like these were the two we'd be following through. Yeah. Um, but it did make it interesting that he lost his brother and had to figure find a way... Mm-hmm back to all this and especially while they were connected i think you know if nothing else the the neural link angle gave us he was in his brother's brain when his brother was eaten by a giant monster right so there's yeah there's only two plot points that the psychic connection actually Mm -hmm. had any bearing and and the other one was when um was it maka mako um had had, uh you know had her blackout Mm -hmm. But, you know, after, you know, the brother is killed and he, they, you know, he, um, Stacker tries to bring him back. Um, he thought he was at brought him back in. Gotta go with that reference. Um, it basically turns into a sports movie. Oh, of course. Oh, yeah. I mean, it takes a lot from Starship Troopers. Yeah, it does. Um, I did like the, the uh, grandson and grandfather on when using the metal detector when, when Gypsy made it to land, though. <laughs> We don't find anything interesting. They're on the frozen beach trying to, you know, find... You know, they find a little toy, toy robot, and then it starts going off. He holds it up toward the water, and we just see Gypsy coming in. And this, you get a great sense of scale. Yeah. Because you see it compared to two humans. Well, because the, the head can fit two humans in it. Right. With lots of room to spare. Mm-hmm. Um. Also, the title sequence doesn't show up until 17 minutes into the film. That is very weird (laughs) to have a title card 17 minutes into the movie. Because it's 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 in place of a time jump. Yeah, because then it jumps five five years. I feel like there maybe should have been a title card there, kind of like there wasn't in um, Gladiators. I think they made it more obvious here that the, there was a time jump. They at least talked about a time jump. 20 minutes later, there was a line in the dialogue about it. I looked at the time. Huh. Um, although, and in the way uh, Stacker brought him back, he said, would you rather die in a Jaeger or on the wall? That's basically all, all, he said, all he had to say in Rally was back in. Yeah. <laughs> And they're introducing the scientists, and Charlie, you know, the guy from Always Sunny, has these tattoos of Jaegers on his forearms. Isn't it obvious he's going to be a problem? When one of uh, the supposed heroes has tattoos of the villains on his arms? I was going to say, he didn't have the Jaeger, he had the... Uh, oh, I'm sorry, did I say Jaeger? I meant Kaiju. Yeah. Um, Kaiju, yeah. Yeah, he's got tattoos of, the, of his favorite Kaijus on his arms. Right. I think that's kind of a tip-off that this guy's going to be a problem. Which, again, happens in the next movie. <laughs> Someone smells sequel. Oh, yeah. This is this sets up a sequel. Actually, this sets up a sequel less than the next movie sets up a sequel. And this one still sets up a huge sequel. Um, and they also telegraph Pentecost's illness. Um, 
He's, he's got this nosebleed that happens occasionally. And you, know, you, you learn he was a former Jaeger pilot before they really kind of shielded around all of the nuclear stuff. Right. And it, as soon as they say he can't go back into one without getting killed, mm-hmm. it's like, oh, so he's going back into oh, one yeah, then, right? <laughs> You, you, obviously, I mean, this movie is just big dumb fun. Yeah. There's nothing else to it. It is giant robots versus giant monsters. That's it. Hey, the armor that the uh, the pilots were, was that the same armor they wore in Strange Brew? It is basically a suit of armor. I love that Mako was able to swim in it in one scene. The, the white and red, yeah, yeah. Uh, the white and white and black, right. you know, armor, where they're playing the the hockey game. Mm. Yeah, I, I, I was impressed that she could swim in it. Um, one thing I did like, the glimpse into the antiverse, where the kaiju come from. Yes. Because in just a few seconds of glimpses that that Always Sunny guy gets from that side when he trips with the Jaeger brain, we basically get the explanation for what they are and where they came from. We see some alien race building the the kaiju. Again, there is more to the dinosaurs. <laughs> mm-hmm. Also, um, they mentioned the the, yeah, the the kaiju. Sorry, have two brains like the dinosaurs. That's also a myth. Dinosaurs did not have two brains. I was going to say I had never heard. <laughs> I had to look it up. There was a belief for some time that dinosaurs had a brain in their tail because of their size, that there had to be a second brain controlling the tail. There wasn't. I mean, I live in Chicago. We're, we're home of Sue the T-Rex, so mm-hmm. there's a lot of you know dinosaur uh, bones here yeah. that we, we bought from the West, and you no, know, <laughs> never heard that before. It, there, it actually was a, a belief for a while, but it's a myth. Um, I have to say, in in any other director's hands, this would be unwatchable. I think Del Toro makes it work. It Del Toro makes it work. Um, he's also got a pretty good cast here yeah. too. It's kind of shocking. <laughs> it's such a you know a script that's pretty much just you know something my nephew could have easily <laughs> written. I think because yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean I feel like we've played this game where we're like big robot warriors oh, yeah. fighting monsters and you know. And just announcing our moves. And I'm ripping on it for, you know, stealing from anime, because it did. Yeah. But in anime, when they do that, at least they throw in some kind of in- weird, interesting philosophical tangent, or some, you know, fast, some, you know, unusual science twist. This time, it's just giant robots, giant alien, alien, gi- aliens, giant monsters, arguably aliens. They are but, aliens, yeah. Yeah. Another, another um dimension instead of another planet but yeah beat it, just giant monsters giant robots beating the shit out of each other that's the movie and yeah you can see from a mile away when he's come up with this plan of you know drifting with the, the kaiju that you know they're gonna figure out what humans are up to yeah, yeah. that it's gonna go two ways mm-hmm. and that it was refreshing to see ron perlman another yeah great gem in this uh-huh. Uh, just of course spelling that out and pretty much hitting him in the face with it literally yeah. <laughs> it goes even further um, I, and not to spoil too much of the sequel if anyone ends up seeing it um, he gets compromised only sunny guy gets compromised oh of course, yeah you can see that coming from a mile away in fact it kind of I think they alluded to it in this one because the he met the creature face to face yeah and right. uh, th- nothing happened. They just kind of stared at each other a little bit, and uh, the the kaiju went to fight right. a gypsy instead. Love the kind of neon tongue effect. The, yeah. the monster's tongue comes out, kind of feels them up a little bit, and it's got this great neon effect. But speaking of cast, and this is a, a, a obscure thing, Ellen McLean as the voice of Gypsy Danger. She played the voice of Gladys in the Portal games. Um had a similar effect on her voice. That was a very nice touch. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of classic nods mm-hmm. in this movie to, to those monster movies. Oh, yeah. Also, loved how simplistic the old Russian Jaeger was. <laughs> oh, yeah, of course. His legs bolted together, very just a, like a wastebasket for a head. 
if Nikolai Volkov were, you know, a little younger, they probably would have had him uh, play the pilot. Mm-hmm. And the EMP angle was predictable, but I enjoyed it until, and I didn't even really think I bought it in this in the movie while watching it. But talking to you, I realized Gypsy still has to be electronic. Of course. <laughs> Maybe it's not digital, but it still has to be electronic. Right. But I was just sitting here like with and my jaw dropped. Like, fri- are they implying? <laughs> That it's not electronic, yeah. That it's like a 54 Studebaker and it's just <laughs> fucking running yeah. a nuclear engine and they're not, you know, communicating with home base and they're not, they don't have screens to show them what's going on. Like, mm-hmm. Of course it's electronic. And it's just a pulley system allowing two people to work this massive robot. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there's a hamster wheel uh, <laughs> in the knees. There's one scene that kind of irritates me, and I, I don't know why. Um, Gypsy is fighting one of the kaiju through the city. Punches through an office building. Uh, the uh, the motion balls? Yeah, the, the fist hits a desk with a Newton's cradle on it. Just enough to start the Newton's cradle going. That scene always annoys me, and I don't know why. You know, I was kind of like, meh, not impressed kind of thing, you know? I mean, it was trying to be cutesy or clever. Yeah. Uh, It was uh, kind of an in-joke, maybe. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, I was kind of, like, not impressed. And then we find out that (laughs) the last line of defense is a fucking sword. (laughs) Which somehow Raleigh wasn't aware that they had. Uh Was it a new addition to Gypsy? Perhaps. Um, yeah, because because Maku has decided she's gonna pull the sword, and that's the and they just I think the kaiju actually like flew them up to space because <laughs> they can fly now apparently. Right. She pulls the sword and just cuts him in half. And of course, I'm sitting there. Why the fuck wouldn't you have used that in the first place? Yeah. <laughs> if if it if it works that well, just just start there. Yeah. Just Ginsu people. <laughs> Fuck it. I did like um, Chow's workers walking through the uh, inside of the pregnant kaiju that they thought, well, oh, yeah, yeah. that one was dead, but the pregnant one. Um, that was, I just loved the interior. It was a nice design. The premature... I thought that was Hector Alonso, but I guess not. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Tell who it is. The prematurely born kaiju, which obviously you could see a mile away. Yeah. It looked kind of like a bat. It had that kind of, you know, flared out nose. Um, light gypsy cutting the, the big kaiju in half lengthwise when it, you know, went at it the, oh, during yeah. the big fight at the end. You know, pulls the sword again and it just comes at them and just cuts lengthwise on the sword. That was great. As if it doesn't have a spinal structure. <laughs> Skeletal structure. I think, I think we skipped one of the uh, more cringy scenes of the movie, actually. Okay. The cliche inspirational speech oh yeah, yeah that has to begin with today yeah did we run when the germans bombed pearl harbor today we cancel the apocalypse <laughs> I was just... this will be our independence yeah. day okay it's not so... that bad <laughs> i was so tempted to pull that for a quote at the beginning and say today we cancel the zombie takeout just to scare people <laughs> I'd say Independence Day is the worst all time. Oh, of course, of course. Yeah. Um, and then Mako sw- swims in what is effectively a suit of armor. And why do right. they need a suit of armor in a giant robot? And Raleigh could hold his breath for, what, like 10 minutes yeah, there? Yeah. When he was coming up, yeah. But they both could. Yeah, how... Well, Well, she had oxygen left. Oh, right. he didn't have any oxygen left, that's right. He, had, he gave his oxygen away, pretty much. So right. whatever was in... Whatever was in the the capsule was it. Mm-hmm. And so for <laughs> the time when he cheated the Slim Pickens. <laughs> yeah. Which, man, I probably would have given this a brain if they if he totally just, you know. If, if, it, if he sacrificed himself, yeah. Yeah, if we get a we'll meet again yeah. <laughs> kind of ending. <laughs> um, one thing that bought it a brain from, half a brain for me, they didn't kiss. <laughs> No, the love interest here is between the father and son, the yeah. Australians. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they kind you of take care of him. 
that that fight scene where he decides that she's going to be his co-pilot, um, Del Toro said he filmed that like a sex scene. So, you know, they <laughs> did kind of set that up like you think they're going to go there. They never went there. I love that. Now, what lost it a brain, or half a brain, what balanced that out was the mid credit scene. <laughs> and I'll hand it to you now because you had a, you come you were expecting a similar scene in Reign of Fire that you didn't get. I can handle it as a goof though. Um, okay. Um, I'm surprised. I mean, they did kind of, you know, they they did look intimate though at the end mm-hmm. when they were together. You know, there was no kiss. They touched foreheads. That's not necessarily a romantic thing. We <laughs> talked about this with Padma. <laughs> um, and, and honestly, why wouldn't they fuck? They they. You drifted together. <laughs> oh, yeah, but they didn't go there. And he's not in the sequel, so from what I recall. So they don't even get into it. Um, but yeah, at the end, in the mid credit scene, um, Perlman's character, ha- Hannibal Chow, who had been um, consumed by the prematurely born dinosaur, um, cuts his way out with like a pocket knife. And asks, where's his shoe? Yeah, because um, always sunny guy walked away, had walked away with it before. Yeah, um, yeah, that kind of. I mean, even as a joke, I don't like that. I don't want to see that. That that it, took it is pretty bad. That took away I the mean, half brain. He he obviously was chewed up. Yeah. Um, one last bit of trivia: uh, approximately a hundred kaiju and a hundred Jaegers were designed, but only a fraction of them appeared in the film. Every week, the filmmakers held a vote for their favorites. One of my favorite uh, sight gags in this, though, was when the uh, the I believe it was the British uh, professor got sick mm-hmm. and he needed to throw a vomit. Yeah, there was actually a toilet in yeah, the yeah. middle of the street because it was just for the wreckage. Okay, I, I remember that scene, but I looked down because I didn't want to see anything. Um, so I'm glad they did hide it somewhere. So it was kind of like, what a stroke of luck! There's this toilet mm-hmm. here in the middle. Of- because it was after a big Jaeger kaiju fight yeah. and everything was yeah. shooting about. On to sequels and remakes. On to sequels and remakes. So you say they, they've done a sequel, yes. which of course, you had to do a sequel to this. Yeah, yeah. The sequel titled Pacific Rim Uprising was released on March 23rd, 2018 with Universal Pictures distributing. Uh, John Boyega stars in it as Jake Pentecost, Stacker's son. Oh, okay. Who joins the program. That. It's fun. It, I don't think it was from what I recall, not quite as good as this one. Um, but it still might be worth checking out if you enjoy that sort of thing. Um, also, an animated series based on... They say anime. I don't know if it's technically made in Japan, so I'll say animated series based on the film is supposed to debut on Netflix this year. Still not there. Um, so, looking forward to that one. Um, and it was weird because a, a lot was made of this movie because... It was considered a a bomb in the U.S., uh-huh. which I mean, it's still it's still grossed like a hundred million here. I, it outperformed the budget. I remember quite by quite a bit. I checked that. It only outperformed the budget because it uh, of the non-U.S. Oh, the international sales market. Okay. The international sales. It actually did like three times yeah, yeah. what it sold in the U.S. So a lot of people oh, wow. started thinking. That wow, are there going to be more movies not centered in the U.S.? Mm. And I mean, top the top movies of the year. It's still not in the top ten, though. So yeah, I'm, I do remember all the marketing because everybody had a Pacific Rim tie-in. Yeah, I mean they they did put a lot into it, and they, they didn't get as much in return. There were also a couple of video games, one for console, one for mobile. Neither did well. Yeah, it just looks like a nightmare just to control that thing yeah. with like the two. Yeah, yeah, didn't make any sense. On the brains. On the brains. Third time I've seen it. Um, I won't say it was better the second time. I won't say it was better this time, but it was. I still had fun with it. But it's just too dumb to recommend. I'm going three and a half. Uh, I'm pretty close to you. It's you know, it's fun. There's some great, uh, there's some great uh, visuals and and actors in it, but the script is just really <laughs> stupid. Yeah. So I'm going three. All right. And what have you learned? Uh, Off brand Transformers. You know, there's more to them than meets the guy. <laughs> 
And I learned that building a wall is never the right answer. <laughs> you think they could beat up these robots. Yeah. How would they possibly get around <laughs> a wall? Wow. That's it for Pacific Rim. Until next time, we'll be reviewing Blood for Dracula. We were referring to it as Blood of Dracula. That's two oh, yeah. other movies with called Blood of Dracula. This is Blood for Dracula, produced <laughs> by Andy Warhol. So this will be interesting. Um, it's our Halloween episode, of course. Until then, of course, always remember, never forget, wherever you go in life, there you are. There you are.